Hello again folks, Jodo Cast here, and this time we're having a look at the new Zombie Strike Crossfire Bow. As per usual, we're going to pop it over the chronometer with the darts that it comes with in stock standard form and see what uh, sort of an output we're getting from it in feet per second. And then we'll go about having a look and seeing what sort of modifications we can do to see if we can improve the FPS. And we're going to do a few cosmetic modifications to this one as well, so we might do that as a second video, or we might tack it on to the end of this one, see how we go. Alright, now we'll get the chronometer set up, and we'll put four rounds of the uh, elite uh, zombie darts that come with the blaster over at the top of the chronometer. Uh, we might actually do a round of eight, so that we can get a um, reasonable average uh, FPS. And then we'll go about trying to improve that and see where we end up with. Okay, back shortly. Alright, so we're going to put uh, eight shots from the new Nerf Zombie Strike Crossfire Bow across the chronometer and see what sort of FPS we're getting. That's the first four. Okay, now for the second four. Okay, so there's our eight shots in standard form. So now we'll go about seeing if we can't uh, get a little bit more oomph out of it. in the name of science. Now all I've done here is tighten the elastic on the actual bow arm so that it gives it a little bit of uh, support. Let's see if it actually improves the FPS at all. It's bouncing out that other dart that's firing the second round. All right, I'm going to tighten it a little bit more and see if, uh, if it gives any more improvement. Uh, all the darts are pushed in firmly. Okay, so it would appear that purely just tightening the elastic actually does have an effect as you can see. I've removed a lot of that excess elastic, so now this is really quite, quite taut. And now when you cock it back, you'll see that the actual bow arms do actually flex as you're cocking it. So the elastic, the bow arm flex and the spring internally are all giving uh, a bit of propulsion to the uh, to the dart. 
So that's um, obviously, you know, we can't remove the air restrictors in this because uh, of the style of gun it is. But um, because it uses that uh, redundant barrel um, system to pass the air onto the next uh, chamber. But um, look, we'll see if we can pop a bigger spring in it as well as maybe do this uh, elastic uh, bow arm, etc, etc, addition, and hopefully look, we can get even more out of it than that. But as you can see, even just doing that actually has made a bit of an increase to the power. Um, but yeah, let's just see what more we can do. Cheers. Okay, so once you open this thing up, you'll notice that uh, the internals are very basic. Um, and essentially it's basically just a half, half a rough cut. Um, you got your four barrels with the air restricted system that passes on the flow to the next barrel. Now there are a couple of little vent holes there, so we will uh, I'll get rid of those. Um, in having a look at it, there is this whole section lifts out with a bit of uh, persuasion. Okay. Slips forward. Now, there's a, this section pops out, which you know maybe the seal between the two could use a bit of an improvement or uh, a bit of reinforcement. And this spring is really quite weak. Um, the seal between the the plunger and the cylinder is terrible. Like it is like throwing a sausage down a hallway it is so loose so that seal definitely needs to be improved and I'm thinking uh, I've got some orange mod work springs on order I haven't got any at the moment though I'm waiting for them to come in that just pops off the bottom of that it looks like maybe there was supposed to be a screw through the bottom of this arm into into there, but there was no screw present when I, when I pulled it apart. Yeah, there was no screw present when I pulled it apart, but it looks like you could use one. Probably not a bad idea. Um, okay, what other good things? Oh, this um, orange piece at the front looks like it's removable. Looks like it's just held in place by a couple of little spring clips or whatever. So, for ease of painting, it looks like that'll come out and you can get a decent two-tone paint job going on it. Uh, also, the main grey area at the back here looks like it may be able to be removed as well. Um, little skeleton part for the centre of the handle comes out as well, so you can give that a paint job if you want. Obviously, a trigger and that will just lift out your priming handle. Uh, probably best to leave those in the colours they're in. If you're going to do the... Uh, Tightening of the cord on the bow arm, I would probably recommend against painting. I mean, you could paint it if you wish, but you probably want to try and get a flexible paint because if the, the bow is um, twisting and warping that little bit, your paint will crack off and fall back off. So uh, I suppose if you're using a vinyl dye, then it might be alright because that will actually etch into the uh, into the plastic. So all right, I'm going to have a play around and see what I can do. Um, I'm going to have a go at improving the seal on this O-ring, blocking up these holes, um, maybe where the junction is actually reinforcing that with some tape. Um, probably a paint job. I'm thinking I might actually try and replace that spring. What I was thinking was, I've actually got one from, that's actually off a stampede. Same sort of diameter, uh, it's a fraction longer, but I'm thinking that might just um, compress all right and give it uh, a decent a little extra amount of oomph. So I'll try that and see if it's going to fit and I'll let you know. Cheers. All right, so now that we've got it all back together, we'll put eight darts across the crony and see what it comes up with. Now this is with the, just the internal modifications done. Uh, all I've done is um, put some Teflon tape under the O-ring to improve the O-ring seal in the in the cylinder. Um, I put a little bit of tape around the outside 
of the joint between the cylinder and the uh, air restrictor assembly, for lack of a better term. Uh, put a bit of tape over the vent holes that uh, are in the top two barrels um, to seal those off and put the stampede spring in it. Um, apart from that, that's, that's pretty much it. Just a little bit of lubricating and that's it. So now I've loosened off the elastic on the bow. So the bow is not contributing to the the bounce brand, so to speak, at the moment. So I thought we'll put it over the conning, see what it does like this. Uh, then we'll put a bit of tension back into that string, etc., and see if that actually improves it a little bit further. All right, so we'll put four over the conning in this form. Uh, eight, sorry, so that we can get a decent average. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll retension that uh, elastic. So now what I've done again is I've tightened up the string, so it's got very little play left in it. And as you'll see, when you cock the bow, again the actual bow arm flexes. So that should give you a little bit of extra oomph behind your shots. So let's see if that uh, lifts the average FPS any further. Okay, so there you go. So I'd have to check the figures. It looks like maybe it does add a little bit more oomph to it. As you can see, the string's over the top of the bow arm to try and get it a more of a parallel with the plunger arm. As, as this is pulled back, you can see there's a bit of an angle on the actual pull to it. So it does put a bit of twist in the arm when you do it this way, so look. I think there's been a bit of an improvement overall. We'll have to go back and check the figures on the video, but uh, uh, look, that's the Nerf Zombie Strike Crossfire Bow. I, think that's... I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Cheers.